After Doug left the room's branch line, Donald and Douglas took turns shunting at the big station. The trucks and coaches gave them no trouble. The yard was kept ship shape. They didn't like shunting one bit. One afternoon, Douglas was taken on water when Gordon popped into the express. Douglas took the coaches to the carriage shed. As he did, a thought struck him. Who's your special coach? he asked. Afraid you've lost it again? replied Gordon smugly. Ugh! Didn't it be daft? grunted Douglas. I haven't seen him for years, replied Gordon. It just vanished. Strange coach. It was stuck out like a sore buffer on my express. It's likely long gone now. Douglas shuddered. The thought of scrap sends shivers through his frames. That evening, Douglas was shunting after the last train had gone. The mist hung low over the rails, and save for the occasional owl, all was quiet. Douglas was still pondering the special coach's disappearance. It couldn't have been my fault, could it? The passengers were upset. What if it was scrapped because of me? Douglas was so preoccupied, he hadn't realized where he was. He ventured into the deepest and loneliest part of the yard. Lights flickered all around, and an eerie stillness blanketed the sidings. He was just leaving the trucks when... Douglas froze. It was there! His eyes settled on a dark shape further down the side. It sat motionless in the shadows. But Douglas felt like he was watching him. Who's the dead? shivered Douglas. The floodlights flickered. Now, Douglas recognized the shape as a coach. Its weary eyes seemed to be glaring at him. Ooh, jinx! He cried and raced back to the sheds. The next morning, he told the other engines about it. I say you were working too late, chuckled Henry. Or, ventured Gordon, perhaps the spirit of the coach is seeking revenge. Gordon wailed in a ghostly, teasing manner. Didn't know you joke about that, huffed Donald. Dougie could have seen something back there. Why don't you find out yourself, teased Gordon. I would, said Donald, but I'm taking wee Bessie's mail train tonight. Excuses, excuses, smirked Gordon. Donald scowled away, while Douglas begged James to take over his night shift. That evening, Donald set off from the harbor with the mail. Log the dance of the air at the sun. As he neared the junction, we caught the faint silhouettes of coaches in the carriage shed. Donald shivered as he turned up the branch line. Then, in the distance, he thought he heard something. Like sheep looming in the fog. Who's the devil? 
stammered Donald. Do not come for me, you spooky! At last, Donald's lamp cut through the fog. There was Daisy, shivering in the dark. The driver held a red lantern. Last at cold weather's been playing with Daisy's engine. He cut out as we're going back to the shed. I'm heading to the top station, Donald sighed with relief. I'll give you a push. Thomas was settling into the shed when the cavalcade arrived. Rail car and mail cars? My, my, Donald, that's quite the train. Took him long enough to realize it was me, flounced Daisy. What was all that ghost claptrap about? Donald explained his twin's encounter. Take my advice, chuckled Thomas. When you want proper gossip, don't listen to Gordon. He may pull the express, but he's barely so much as looked in the carriage yard. Let me tell you what happened. The next morning, Donald led Douglas back to the deepest part of the yard. I did not like this, Dylan, whimpered Douglas. I told you what I saw. Oh, quit your bladder and come on, will ye? You see. Deeper and deeper into the yard they went. Douglas grew more nervous with every wheel turn. Suddenly, there it is! He cried. Sat back at the end of the sidings was the special coach. He hadn't heard the twins arrive and was still asleep. Look at that, chuckled Douglas. She's sleep talking, so that's what I heard. With a startled snore, the coach woke. Oh, uh, good morning. Forgive me, but I don't usually have visitors. I thought I'd been forgotten. What are you doing here? The passengers complained I wasn't as comfortable as the other coaches, she harumphed. And all those express runs wore me down. I was put aside for maintenance, but just kept getting pushed further and further into the yard. And now, here I am. She sighed and looked at the others. How oh, I learned to be useful again. I may have forgotten you once, chuckled Douglas, but don't let another make sure it doesn't happen again. And I know how we can get back at Gordon, smirked Donna. Some nights later, Gordon arrived at the bus station with his evening express. It was a calm night, and safe for the passengers, there wasn't a sound to be heard. Until... Gordon! Everyone froze. Gordon's eyes widened. Gordon! Who, who, who's there? He stammered. You forgot me. I, 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 who are? I'll make sure you never forget again. To Gordon's horror, the old coach rolled out of the woodshed. Then a whistle came beside him. Boo! Gordon reached and jumped. Oh, heavens, help! He cried, closing his eyes. Silly me. Gordon opened his eyes and found Donald next to him, while Douglas crept out of the workshed with the coach. The passengers and the crew and the twins erupted with laughter. Gordon blessed. When Sir Topham had heard, he had a good laugh too, and ordered the coach's immediate restoration. He now helps the twins take passengers down Duck's branch line. They call her Isla. She loves her new name, and that she's a special coach once more. She likes a bit of fun, too, and never misses a chance to ooh eerily when the express passes. Gordon doesn't answer. He now finds the subject of ghosts, white, undignified.